God is such an awesome God. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's always worthy to be praised. I'm so glad that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, didn't have but one, only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to remind you that at the end of this message, we, this is first Sunday, and so we will, we will be administering communion. And I want you to remember that Jesus was bruised. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we're healed. And so we understand that even when we take the bread that represents his body that was broken and beaten for us, and then when we drink the juice, it reminds us that he bled and died, that he shed blood. Because we always say in the scripture says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So somebody had to die so that we could live. Aren't you glad about that? Hallelujah. Amen. And thank God his death was not in vain. And in him we have our hope. Today I want to talk to you about guided by the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Ghost. We, we need a guide. We can't lead ourselves. We can't go it alone ourselves. We need somebody to help us. If you listened to uh, last week's teaching in the Bible study, we was talking about the help is on your helper is on the inside of you. And so now we're explaining to you or trying to get you to understand that you need to allow your help to guide you. And so we're saying we want to leave in your ears guided by the Holy Spirit. When we look at the word guided, we're looking at the fact that we have to be directed by the Holy Spirit. We have to be steered by the Holy Spirit, not by our own mindset, not by our own experience. Experiences are good as long as you have experience in the word of God, experience in the ways of God, in the mind of God, and the, and, and, and the teachings of God. Uh, and, and so, uh, God, it means directed, it means steered, it also means influence. We've got to be influenced by the Holy Spirit. At the end of the day, we can't let popularity influence us. We can't let the news influence us. We can't let what people say influence us. We can't allow what people do and the decisions that other folks make influence us. We cannot let gov government officials that are not in line with the word of God influence us. We cannot allow uh, the heads of state and we can't allow anybody that has power in this world to influence us in one way or the other. We have to make sure that we are being influenced that we are being steered, that we are being led and guided and directed by the Holy Spirit. Over in Galatians, the Living Bible, chapter 5, verse 16 through 26 says, I advise you to, to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. That's the advice that Paul gave to the people at the, the Galatians at Galata, the church of Galata. He says, I advise you, this is my advice to you. While you are listening to all of this other stuff and you are, are listening to yourself and your flesh and your own mind, he said, I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. I like the word over in John 16, John chapter 16, verse 13, in A, the A part of that, it says, but when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide, direct, lead, instruct you into all the truth, the whole truth. So when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you, he will direct you, he will lead you, he will instruct you not to have truth, not to made up stuff, not to fables, but into all the truth, the whole full truth. Galatians 16. B. Galatians chapter 5, 16, B says, He will, the Holy Spirit, tell you where to go and what to do. And then you won't always be doing the wrong things your evil nature wants you to. Hallelujah. 
you're probably doing things that you shouldn't be doing because you are not listening to the Holy Spirit tell you what to do, where to go, and how to do. And so the Bible says the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, will tell you. And when you listen to the Holy Spirit, we won't always be doing the wrong things that our, what kind of nature, evil nature wants us to do. You remember Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That means on our own, our own heart will fool us. The heart, the thing that, that, that where we, where I, we're emotionally connected and, and decision making and all of this stuff that's going on, our own heart is deceitful and, and desperately above all things. Or it says deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That means can't nothing fool you like your own heart. You ever seen people that they are, they are adamant about what they're doing, what they believe in, and they're willing to die for it, and they're willing to kill you for it, and everybody knows they're just as wrong as they can be. That's because their heart has fooled them. That's because the heart, it, see the heart outside of Christ, the heart, the, the, and, and really what we're talking about is, 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 is the human spirit. The human spirit, when it's dead and the Holy Spirit is not in the human spirit, not being ruled and reigned, the human spirit is not being ruled and reigned by the Holy Spirit. What is happening is, is that the whole, your, your, your heart or your human spirit outside of the Holy Spirit has the, has the propensity to destroy itself. To have you doing stuff that's straight from the pit of hell and you think you are doing the right thing. And so we have to understand that the Holy Spirit will guide us. And he tells us where to go, and, he's, and, 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 and then we won't always be doing the wrong things our evil nature wants us to do. Verse 17 says, for we naturally love to do evil things. Look at there. Don't fool yourself. That's why I said the heart is deceitful about all things and desperately wicked. The Bible says we naturally, over here in, in Galatians uh, chapter 17, the living Bible says, we naturally love to do evil things. Woo. Just love it. So that's why you got to keep this flesh in check. You got to make sure this flesh is dead. You got to make sure this flesh and appetite are dead. You got to make sure you have the mind of Christ. You can't play with this natural old man. He does not want to do right. And the Bible says he naturally loves, not just like, but love to do evil. There's nothing else he would rather do. He, he would rather do evil than sleep. He would rather do evil. Then help somebody. And he says that are just, and, and he says that, you know, he, the, let me just back up and say, we, for we naturally love to do evil things that are just the opposite from the things that the Holy Spirit tells us to do. Love to do just the opposite. What does the Holy Spirit want you to do? The natural man wants to do the opposite. Holy Spirit says love. The natural man says hate. Holy Spirit says help everybody. The natural man says use everybody. The Holy Spirit says sacrifice. The natural man says don't, don't make no sacrifice. Make everybody sacrifice for you. Want to do just the opposite. And the good things we want to do when the Holy Spirit has, has his way, the good things that we want to do when the Holy Spirit is having his way in our life, it, it, it says with us are just the opposite of our natural desires. Isn't that something? So when we follow the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit, don't fool yourself. Even when, you're, when the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you and you're walking in the Spirit of truth and you're feeling good and you know you're walking in the Spirit and you got this, this communication with God the Father and he's just telling you stuff and you anointed and you're just, uh, just going and blowing and things are working right and you're overcoming this and overcoming that in the enemy. You are knocking him out, boy. He, he can't stand you. He don't have a chance. I mean, you just power. You lift it up. You walking in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost is just moving on the inside of you. The greater he that's on the inside of you than he that's in the world is operating all over the place. You must understand that there is an old man and there is a sinful nature and there is a thing that's opposite of what you're experiencing on the inside of you and he is upset that you're having such victory in the Christ. You're having such victory in the Lord. He's upset that you've learned how to walk in kindness. He's upset that you have the love of Christ <sighs> moving through you. He's upset that you are anointed. He's upset. 
Not somebody else's nature, my own, your own nature. He said, I don't want you to act like that. So when the Spirit has this way with us, we are just the opposite of our natural desires. And I need you to remember and understand that these two forces went up within us, these two forces within us, are constantly fighting each other to win. Over us and our wishes are never free from their passions. Always fighting. Natural man, spiritual man, always fighting. In your sleep, they're fighting. When the natural man is having his way over the spirit man, they're fighting. And when the spirit man has an upper hand over the natural man, they're fighting. And they're always fighting not to get along, not to compromise, but fighting to win. One is always fighting to win over the other. I need you to make sure that you get that down in your spirit, man. And understand that in your thinking. Godless human nature, for these are antagonistic to each other. And they continually, continually, all the time, day and night, withstanding in conflict with each other. All the time, all the time, all the time. It's always, always a fight. It reminds me of a story. And you've heard this story before. It's the story that a Native American... Cherokee told his, told his grandson. This is a, a Native American Cherokee story about two wolves. One evening, an old Cherokee told his grandson about a battle that goes on on the inside of people. And he said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside of all of us. And he said, they fight all the time, and, 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 and sometimes they fight every day, and, and, and sometimes they fight from, from morning to evening. And, and, and one of those wolves, one is evil. It, 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 it is anger and envy and jealousy, sorrow, regret, grief, arrogance. Self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies. One, one, one of those evil ones, the evil one is, is, is false pride and superiority and ego. So that one is evil, but he said there's another one that is good. And, and, and it is joy, it's peace, love, the love of God is hope, serenity, Humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. And so the grandson, he's listening, he's listening. He understands that there is an evil wolf in there and there is a, there's a, there, 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 there is a good, there, there is a good wolf. And in his mind, he's trying to figure out if they're fighting all the time, somebody got to win. Which one is going to win? The grandson thought about it for a minute, and then he asked his grandfather, he says, which wolf wins? And the old Cherokee simply replied. He took his time, and he says, the one you feed. The spirit man represents the good wolf, the natural man, the old man, the fleshly man represents the evil wolf. And you have to be careful and we have to be careful as saints and believers of the living God, which one we feed. Because the one that you feed, there's always a war going on. There's always a fight. But the one that you feed, that's the one that's going to win. And don't think just because you feed the spirit man one day that he's got it made the rest of the days. 
Because every day, just like you feed this natural body, three meals or two meals or whatever it takes to sustain it, just like you feed this natural body, every day you've got to feed your spirit man. You've got to feed your spiritual man. And when you don't feed him and he's not strong, the natural man is going to win. And so you have to understand that you have to realize that I need to feed my good wolf. I got to feed him every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. But that, when I heard some, some I, heard, I heard a writer said, and it was a song where he said, every day is a day of thanksgiving. And so what you need to understand is seek to be in the presence of God and you will probably demonstrate the things that the good, good wolf demonstrated. But if you're going to be in yourself, if you're going to be in flesh, if you're going to have an ego problem, if you're going to be selfish, if you're going to be angry and lie all the time and steal and cheat, you will, you better believe that the evil wolf is having his way. We're living in a time where the evil wolf is just wreaking havoc. He wants to have his way. Here again, you've heard me say this. That's why the pandemic is still hanging around strong. Because you got an evil wolf. The people are, let, are allowing the evil wolf on the inside of them dictate what to do. They don't have enough restraint. They don't have enough self. Oh, my God. They don't have enough self-control to understand that if we do what we're supposed to do, that this thing would not be as bad and soon pass over. But they don't understand that there's a fight on the inside of them. And the evil wolf is winning because of selfishness. And so we have to understand, we have to understand when we are guided, verse 18, when you are guided, directed, managed, and controlled by the Holy Spirit, you need no longer force yourself to obey Jewish laws. And you don't have to worry about breaking laws of the land. You don't have, do you understand the laws of God supersedes the law of the land? If you would understand the commandments and the statutes of Almighty God, if you would allow the things, the Spirit of God, the, if you would allow the fruit of the Spirit of God to be manifested in you, you won't have to worry. See, the law is for the lawless anyway. If a folk that going to break the law. Verse 19 says, but when you follow your own wrong inclinations, and this, was the, this is what the problem, we got people around nowadays, you got smart people, you got people that, that are unintelligent, that are in darkness, they're walking around following their own inclinations. The Bible says when you follow your own wrong inclination, your lives will produce these evil results impure thoughts, eagerness for lust for pleasure. Everybody want to feel good and do what they want to do <laughs> in spite of danger. And that's what happens when you're, when you're thinking about, you know, when, when, when you have impure thoughts and here again, eagerness for lust for pleasures. It goes on to say idolatry. We got some people, they, they rather serve things than serve God. For some people, their idol is their God, their God is their money and their possessions. And them having a good time with all of this stuff. And when they can't do it, they are mad. They're angry with God. They're angry with a God <laughs> that says, thou shalt have no other God before me. They're angry with a God that's trying to teach them something. And that is... The God that you serve, the small g, these things, tangible gods, is not going to help you and can't help you in the time of trouble. And so he's trying to get them to transition from idol gods to the true and living God. And people are not hearing him. They are bent on. They just want to. They can't help themselves. Their inclination is, I want to do what I want to do. Whatever feels good, that's what I want to do. We're not worrying about dying because many people don't, do you, you don't understand, many people don't believe in, in the hereafter. They really don't. They don't. You don't believe me? Look at the way they live. They, they live like this is their heaven. 
They live like when they die, it's all over with, it's done, it's like animals, you just go back to the ground. They don't understand that there is an eternity after. There is another life after this life. And so, and they live like that. And so it said idolatry, spiritualism, that is encouraging the activities of demons. There's hatred and fighting, jealousy and anger, cons- constant effort to get the best of yourself, get the best for yourself. Everybody, it's, it's what about me? I can't make the money I want to make. And I've noticed, too, that a lot of, lot of entities and business and companies that are, that, are, that, are, that are struggling, a lot of those business has to do with entertainment. People doing things to have a good time, to please the flesh. You know, I've noticed that we have a, we, we've got a law now. We've got a new law out, a new rule uh, that, <laughs> Lord have mercy, that they're going to stop selling. The ABC store is going to stop selling alcohol at 11 o'clock from 11 to 6. They're not going to sell it. Shouldn't be selling it anyway. Say, should, 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 shouldn't, be, shouldn't be selling anyway. But here's the deal. The law says that they can sell it and people can buy it. That's what the law says. That's why I said if you do the law of Christ, oh, come on, somebody. If you walk in the spirit and obey the spirit and you're led and guided by the spirit, you tr- out trump that law. You're bigger than that law. Just because the law says you can do it and do it at a certain time, uh, that don't make it God's law. When you're walking in God's law, God's law says uh, 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 be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk. Don't be drunk with wine. But be filled, filled with the Spirit. So if you follow God's law and not be drunk with wine but be filled with the Spirit, you don't worry about when they open or close or how long they Do you understand the, the, how we profit in walking in the spirit and being led in God by the spirit and not have to worry about what we can do or not or what we can or cannot do according to man-made law? We don't walk by man-made law. We walk by the laws of God. We're not guided by man's law. We're guided by the Holy Spirit. And what I like about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is just like Jesus. He is Christ on the inside of us, but the Holy Spirit is just like Jesus in his day that the Pharisees thought Jesus came to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. He came to say, look, the law was pointing toward me, and now I'm here, you ought to recognize and do what I do. Hallelujah. And so, it has a whole list of things. Let me just, when you follow your own inclinations, there's a whole list of things that's going on. Complaints, and criticisms, the feeling that everyone else is wrong except those in your own little group. And then there will be wrong doctrines, envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and all that sort of thing. He said, let me tell you again. I've told you one time. Let me tell you again, just in case you didn't hear me the first time. He said, let me tell you again, as I have before that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. So when you got this kind of stuff going on in your life and that's your norm, that's your constant, that's what you do, that's what you're in a habit of doing, he says in his word, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. So go on and play and go on and do the things that the flesh tell you to do and you can have the best funeral you want to have. They can speak all kind of good things about you. You better read the Bible. You better understand that the word of God is true and the word of God prevails. You have to understand that God is a God. God, God some people think God don't have common sense. Yeah, they think, they think God don't have any common sense. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. See, naturally, 
we are not going to reward somebody that's just going to ignore us and disobey us and, 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 and make fun of us and, and do all everything that we say do. They do just the opposite and make and belittle us and disappoint us and disgrace us and shame us and, and just uh, uh, make fun of us and, 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 and just do all kind of crazy stuff. We're not going to award anybody. We're not going to go in. We're not going to give them a thousand dollars for abusing us. What makes you think that you can live any kind of way? And then all of a sudden, when you close your eyes, you're living for the devil. You party. You do all of this stuff. And when you close your eyes, you got a God. You're doing just the opposite of what God says to do. When you close your eyes, all of a sudden, you're going to be in the presence of God. And you're going to be shouting and thanking Jesus. You, you're just going to be having a good time. You are mistaken. Just like we don't do that kind of stuff in the natural, God has... God is bigger than we are. He has more sense than we have. He gave us all the sense that we have. He is not going for it. And you can talk all you want to. You can say this is erroneous doctrine. If this is erroneous doctrine, then you don't know what doctrine is because you're not reading your Bible. You got to be able to understand that God is a holy God. That God is a God of sanctification. That God is a God of truth. And you have to understand that all of this stuff that, 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 that we're doing and it's of the flesh, that we are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. I love verse 22 says, it says, but, hallelujah, thank the Lord for the Christian, for the believers, for those that are holy known, for those that are keeping the faith, for those who are fighting, for those who are steadfast, for those who believe the word of God and allow the spirit of God to control them. He said, but when the Holy Spirit controls our life, when the Holy Spirit guides our life, when the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, my God, directs us and steers us, when the Holy Spirit influences us, he says, but when? The Holy Spirit controls our life. He will produce this kind of fruit in us. In other words, we're going to be the good wolf. In other words, this is what's going to show up in us. This is what we're going to demonstrate. This is what's going to come out of us. This is what's going to be produced. It says love. We're going to be loving everybody. We're going to love that. And I'm not just talking about a feeling. We're going to have the Christ kind of love. We're going to be able to, oh my God, love people for who they are. Love people because it's right to love them. Love people because God said love them. Love people because that's the right thing to do. Love people because God loved us. Love. Then we're going to produce joy. We're going to be peacemakers. We have peace going. We'll, we'll have patience all, all in us, all through us. Be willing to help folks and be willing to suffer with them and be willing uh, to, to, to nourish and help strengthen them and guide them. Be patient with them. Show them. Wait for them to get it right. If they get it wrong, go back to the beginning with them. And all while doing that, show them kindness. When you should be fussing at them, show them kindness. When they've done you wrong, show them kindness. <laughs> when you're right and they're wrong, and they've caused you money, and they've caused you time, and they've caused you some setback, at that moment, be kind. Show kindness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they don't deserve it, be kind to them. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And here, there is no conflict with Jewish law. Well, all of these things being produced by the Holy Spirit, it's above the law, baby. You don't have to worry about it. It's above the law. I like 24 says, those who belong to Christ, have nailed their natural evil desires to his cross and crucified them there. So those of us who belong to Christ and we believe that Christ lives on the inside of us and that he is, he is able to lead and guide us and that he is leading and guiding us. We're allowing him to lead and guide us and to control us. 
what we do to this flesh, this natural man, this evil wolf, this one that's fighting against us, what we do when we yield to the Spirit of God and let the fruit of the Spirit move and operate through us. Every time we allow, hallelujah, every time we allow the Spirit of God to operate through us and produce this good fruit, we're nailing the flesh back to the cross. Every time we show kindness, we're nailing the flesh back to the cross. Every time we show love and we have joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness, we are telling this flesh to shut up and stay in your place. We're nailing it back to the cross. Bible says if we are living now by the Holy Spirit's power, then let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading. If we're if, 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 if we living, if we say we're living by the Spirit of God, then we, by the Spirit of God, and, and, and if we are living now by the Holy Spirit's power, because the Holy Spirit is power, then he says let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading. If he has power, if you claim that the Holy Spirit has power in your life, then somebody ought to see the Holy Spirit leading you in every part of your life. The Amplified says, let us not become vainglorious and self-conceited, competitive and challenging and provoking and irritating to one another, envying and being jealous of one another. We got to make sure that we allow the Spirit of God to lead and guide us. Lead and guide us. Guided by the Holy Spirit. Directed. Steered. What, you, what, what are you worried about? What are you worried about? Well, man, you know the number's going up. I've been saying that, and you've been saying that for the last three, four months. And? People just not doing what they're supposed to do. And? Oh, man, folks dying and people getting sick and Boy, this is the worst time in this worst time in history. You got 150,000 people dead in you, and, and and so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You going to stop listening to God? You going to stop walking in the Spirit? You going to put your Bible down? You going to start worrying and having all these issues and stuff? No, 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 no. We are going to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know what to do, just say, Lord, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, tell me, show me, lead me, guide me, teach me, instruct me, direct me, help me. Comfort me, counsel me, <laughs> strengthen me, and he'll do just that. Won't he do it? I am so glad that one day Jesus came into this world. The Bible called him Emmanuel. Mean God with us. Came down 42 generations. To put a face on God and to show every man how to live in the spirit, yet walking in this fleshly body. The Bible says he was without sin. He came to show us how man can, how to live in the spirit and walk in the spirit, even though you're in this fleshly body, but he also came, which was the most important thing, he came to die for our sins. And if he had not died, you and I would not have a right to the tree of life. We would not have a right to eternal life. We have eternal life right now, right now, right now. That's why you don't have to worry about dying. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about sufferings. You have to understand that we, our citizenship is from heaven. 
And now we're connected to heaven. We're going back to heaven once we receive Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. We are on our way to heaven as we live out what we're supposed to live out in this body. So we don't have to worry. And we must understand that Jesus came to die, that we can live and live in a way that it's a win-win. On that night that Jesus was about to be betrayed, he was in the upper room or he was in the room with his disciples as you stand to your feet. And he took the bread and he said, I need you to understand that this represents my body, which was broken for you. It was beaten, whipped, torn, flesh just torn. He said, I did this. I went through this for you. Take and eat all of it. Likewise, he took the cup and said, this is my blood in the New Testament. It was advantageous. It was necessary that I die and shed blood on the cross for the sins of the whole nation, the sins of the world. Take and drink all of it. He reminds them, he says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you demonstrate and you remember the Lord's death until he comes back. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you today. We worship you in the spirit. We thank you for such a time as this. That you prove and you manifest yourself over and over and over again. Lord, we can't forget all of your, big, your great benefits. Ah, we can't forget your loving kindness. We can't forget what you've done for us. So, Father, we know that you have a grip on us, but teach us not to walk away from you. Teach us not to go in our own strength about anything, in our own way about any decision. Help us to continue to be led and guided by you. You said the, the just shall live by faith. And Lord, we have been justified and we have received your salvation and we Believe your word and we believe you, that you will keep us and we'll be kept by your power. Now, until you that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless on that day. Go with us, stand by us, keep us, provide us, later, restore us, energize us, renew us, that we may continue to be a beacon of light in these times. Bless every saint under the sound of my voice. Every believer under the sound of my voice. And those that don't know you, draw them by your spirit. Give them the faith to believe. Give them saving faith in the mighty name of Jesus. That they too can experience joy in turbulent times. Be with us. Bring us back on the appointed time. And we'll be careful to praise you and give you glory and honor. Do your name in Jesus' name. Amen.